Good afternoon, this is David Krause. I'm the editor of the Aspen Times. I'm here today with Colorado Mountain College Chief Operating Officer Matt Gianeschi. We're gonna have a conversation uh, for the next little bit about ballot question 7D, which is uh, for area voters in the six counties that Colorado Mountain College serves. It will look to not necessarily raise the mill levy, but give the Board of Trustees the ability to adjust the mill levy based on the Gallagher Amendment. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate you spending the time here. Um, Gallagher Amendment, it's a crazy influx of different factors for property tax values. Just kind of give us a quick breakdown of what that looks like and how that affects CMC overall in the budget. Sure. Well, thanks for inviting me. And um, you know, this is not new um, to the Valley or to any um, local government. Uh, Gallagher has been around since 1983. Um, it was an amendment that was added into the Constitution at that time. Um, the challenges that have occurred over the last several years related to the Gallagher Amendment have to do with the requirement in the amendment that forced the legislature to balance um, tax revenues, local tax revenues, uh, between uh, commercial um, and residential. And effectively, it's 55% commercial, 45% residential. However, in Colorado, the vast majority um, of the value of all properties in the state are actually in residential. And that's because of all the new people moving to the state, second homeowners who own multiple properties and may not actually even live in the state. Um, so we see residential values and residential, the number of residential properties increasing dramatically, um, where our business properties uh, may be a bit more stable, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a more traditional growth. What that results in is in trying to make those, or when, when the legislature is recalibrating back to that 45-55, the only option they have is to lower the residential assessment rate. For local governments, what's that, what that means for us, for fire districts, for water districts, for anyone, for county governments, for school districts. Um, it means that uh, there is a forced reduction um, in the potential revenues that would have otherwise gone into those services based at the existing mill levy. Um, that reduction in the, in the residential assessment rate has the effect of reducing revenues that would have otherwise gone into those services. Makes planning pretty challenging uh, when you are looking at this every other year. The assessment change comes every two years. So um, during the last assessment period, 2017-18, um, right. Um, see the reduction was approximately 15%. Uh, um, so we had to very quickly uh, adjust 15% of our expected revenue out of our budget, which Would can be pretty uh, destabilizing. $2.8 million dollars in 2017, was, roughly? $2.8 million um, yeah. was the amount that um, when we first got, were notified um, that that was going to be the adjustment. Um, we had an expectation of what we thought mm -hmm. our revenues would be, and from that, we plan programming, we plan facilities, um, investments, uh, such as you know financing or other capital needs that we have, as well as tuition. Um, that changed very abruptly um, in March about a year ago mm -hmm. um, when we had to adjust $2.8 million out of our budget. Because tuition went up 9%? Tuition was, we had to reset tuition. Right. Um, we had to reset um, benefits for employees. Um, we had to make some pretty dramatic changes very quickly um, right. in order to accommodate that, that adjustment. So um, you guys have asked for this uh, ability before to have the trustees be able to adjust the mill uh, to keep the balance, the budget stable. Um, last year, it passed in two counties, uh, Pitkin County and Route County, but overall it uh, failed 53% to 47%. So how do you approach voters differently now? And um, what is what is the objective in those four counties, Summit, Lake, and the others where you didn't pass? Uh, what's the focus there? So let me be clear that as a employee of the college, um, it was not my initiative or um, right. anything that, the, that we are doing. Um, it is our elected board of trustees that put the question Thank you. on the ballot. And so um, I'm here to represent the, the college and explain what's happening. I will also represent um, what the trustees did in mm -hmm. putting that question out there. And that caveat's important because uh, this really does lie in seven elected board members um, that represent all of those counties you just mentioned. Right. I mean, it's their job to put those kinds of questions forward. So, but I was at the meeting, um, of course, um, and am intimately familiar with the decision that was made, and so I can speak um, 
that at that meeting, um, the trustees said that as we look ahead um, to the next potential reduction, which is coming, um, everybody um, who works in local government knows that there will be another reduction. We don't yet know what the number is going to be. Mm -hmm. The projection is that for us at CMC, um, we expect not less than a reduction of $3.8 million. Right. Um, to put that in perspective, um, $3.8 million is equal is actually larger than our Aspen campus. Um, that's, the op that's more than the operating budget of the Aspen campus. It's about the size of the operating budget of our rifle campus. So okay. if we had to say, how do you work 3.8 million out of your budget, it would have the equivalent effect of removing the rifle campus from our budget within 30 days. Um, right. That's what the effect is. So the trustees in looking at this um, this year, they, their decision and the conversation that they had um, was they recognized that they have a duty and a responsibility um, to the taxpayers of this district um, to ensure that the services that are expected at a college like ours, we are a community college and in each of our communities, in order to preserve that, um, they need to ensure that they are constantly um, advocating on behalf of um, the best interests of the institution, and that is for maintaining the financial solvency of the institution. So, um, you know, I, I think there are a lot of, you know, each member probably has their own um, slightly different interpretation of exactly how um, they uh, internalize the decision. Right. Um, but the ultimate decision is, is that it's a, it's a duty or a responsibility to maintain the services that are expected in a community like ours where um, without CMC, um, there is no other college um, that's providing services to this region. Um, we not only provide college degrees, as you're familiar with, um, but we provide non-credit instruction. We provide uh, recreation and, and, and other support. Um, in this valley in particular, our art classes and classes for seniors, um, our largest program up here is actually English as a Second Language. Mm -hmm. All of those services are covered um, by the things that come in through local funding. So. That's really where their initiative is. As far as what's different, we recognized that the question that was asked last year, we were the first to ask um, that kind of a question at that scale. And mm -hmm. so actually the Denver Post um, put it on the front page. Uh, they said this little college up in the mountains is challenging uh, the Gallagher Amendment. Um, but it was a technical question. It was very, it was maybe hard to interpret for some. We even heard from people who were in favor of the college. They, were, they had a harder time interpreting what it was supposed to do. Um, I can tell you that the trustees this time um, had tried to take a step back and simplify the intent um, to try to describe to um, every voter and put it in, in a context that was easier to interpret, that didn't require a law degree to understand the constitutional Im implications, right. and to put it in, in terms of what are the services that the college provides, so where um, things such as CMC is the only provider um, of firefighter training in the area, pretty important this year. Um, we're the only uh, provider of uh, police officers and first responders. Um, our largest program is actually EMS, um, for so emergency first responders. Um, those are our students, um, and those are the ones who are, are, uh, are very active in this community. Um, teachers, nurses, that's what we do. So our board in that election decided that, or in putting that question forward, they decided that they wanted to spend more time clarify or simplifying the intent, making it easier to interpret, and also connecting back to the services of what we do so that it doesn't always imply that it's just tuition or this. Um, it actually implies the, the, um, a bit more of the um, um, holistic nature of the kinds of services that are provided throughout the valley. So for the voters then, we'll, we'll do the two you know, questions of what ifs. So uh, the what if it passes and what if it fails. So let's address uh, what if it passes first. What if what if this passes this year and the trustees have that ability? Um, we kind of know the basics. It helps to balance, keep the balance, the budget where it needs to be. But overall, what happens uh, if this does pass? So nothing changes dramatically right away. Um, what this question um, does, technically speaking, um, is authorize the Board of Trustees to respond to any future reductions caused by the Gallagher Amendment only. So it does not authorize the trustees to raise their revenues um, arbitrarily. Um, it doesn't authorize them um, to modify the mill levy just because they think they have a new project and there's something they're looking for. Those would still require an additional vote under Tabor and under the Constitution that's still required. What this would do is simply authorize the board to have one more tool in the toolbox. So as we look at um, the financial implications of any future 
event caused by the Gallagher um, Amendment. This would authorize the trustees to not only consider reductions in the budget, which they would, or tuition increases, which are you know, possible as well, but they could also look at um, modifying the mill levy. Um, and each of those um, options could be on the table so that they could have at least kind of a full slate um, of financial tools um, to consider. Um, there's nothing automatic um, that's found in this. There is no increase that's embedded in this. It's simply the authority for the trustees um, to consider that at that time. And then if it doesn't pass, yeah. what's the next step? Well, yeah, I, uh, I hate to doomsday this because I don't really know. And who knows when the recession's coming or whenever any other major financial events could, could occur. But um, our expectation at this point um, is that we think, um, based upon the um, estimates from the uh, Legislative Council staff at the, at the Colorado um, General Assembly, um, they've estimated that the reduction may be as much as 20% off of the current uh, residential assessment rate. Uh, for us, um, the district that we serve is not just Picking County, it's Picking and Garfield, Lake County, Summit County, Eagle County, and Steamboat Springs. It's actually not all of Route County, but okay. Steamboat Springs. For all of those, um, for us, it would be approximately $3.8 million in uh, reduced revenues. And again, re remember, two years ago, we lost 2.8. This would be a 3.8 on top of that. And it's not that um, property value growth doesn't offset some of that. It does. So if our properties continue to escalate in value, sure, there's an offsetting effect. But the question would be uh, for us, if we're seeing a 20% reduction in the revenues, do we also see a 20% gain every year in assessment rates for our or, uh, appraisal rates for, our val for the pro value of our properties? Um, that kind of double-digit increase, that, that, that's probably not likely. Um, and so I think from a stability standpoint, um, there may be some initial offset based upon revenue or property valuation change, um, but that becomes a permanent reduction. So that 20% reduction in what would have been the revenues coming into the college would be um, very significant. What we, would we do? I don't want to begin to speculate. I can, again, put in context that it is equivalent to removing one campus from our uh, 11 campus enterprise. Um, mm -hmm. So um, that is a very significant impact for us. What is the overall budget for CMC? Um, well, so the overall um, budget is close to about $80 million um, when you include all revenues all in, and that includes um, contracts and other things. Mm -hmm. The operating budget, and that's more the day-to-day, -day, the um, money that goes into personnel and, and, and tuition and instructors, and I'm sorry, from tuition um, to instructors and the like, it's closer to about $69 million. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have 11 campuses. Uh, we serve... Um, between 18,000 and 20,000 students. Uh, we have about 1,500 employees um, total. So the enterprise, I think, is a bit more significant than many people recognize when they see maybe the small CMC campus in their neighborhood, um, recognizing that we actually represent a very large um, enterprise, um, including um, now bachelor's degree programs, which obviously extends the number of types of students that are also enrolled at the college. Right. Matt, I really appreciate you taking the time to help us explain this to the voters in the yep. area. You got it. Um, It'll be on your, if you're looking for a sample ballot, you can go to Picking County uh, website and there is a sample ballot that has the uh, uh, language for this ballot question, 7D, as well as all the other ones. Uh, Mail-in ballots will be sent out on October 15th and the election day is November 6th. So we will continue to do these forms with some of the other ballot questions we have here in Picking County and the area. I'm David Krause, editor of the Aspen Times. We appreciate your time today. Take care.